Hello and welcome to another Living Oracle Divination Reading. Today we're using the Star Spinner Tarot and we're also using the Mystical Shaman Oracle Group 1, Group 2, Group 3, Group 4, and Group 5. The timestamps are in the description box below. Hello Group 1, you have a wishing star, so wishing upon a star. You have the turtle, uh, which is all about creativity and earth and protection. And you have a teddy bear, uh, which is all about healing and feeling safe. We'll put all this together in a moment. You have two of the Mystical Shaman Oracles, so I'm just going to draw them both. We have Stand Still and the Coyote. And now let's grab some dice. This one right here and the word ship. When the creators of the Mystical Shaman Oracle designed this deck, they designed it to be read in a particular way. Uh, I always just go with intuition. So each of these cards can represent an essence, an invitation, or medicine. And when I ask Spirit, uh, both of these cards for you, these are both to be read as medicine cards. So let's start with, and actually I think I want, nope. Let's start with Coyote and then go to Standstill. The medicine here, are you being seduced by what you think you desire? Could it be that the more superficial, sparkly, shiny aspects of your ambition led you in this moment? Perhaps you, you feel that in order to get what you desire, you have to compromise yourself, control others, or manipulate situations to ensure your goal is met. Coyote howls in the shadows to remind you that this may be a lesson too painful to learn. Beware the shallow waters right now. Someone or something might pretend to be deep, but that doesn't make them so no matter how seductive their superficial traits and how beautiful or sparkly they appear. All that glitters there will not turn up gold, no matter how many wishes you make to change that. Isn't that interesting? Because we have the make a wish upon a star and the protection of both the turtle and the teddy bear, and a ship is a vessel that navigates over emotions, water, psyche, consciousness with others. Think of relationship. It's how you relate to each other in this vessel of navigating emotions and psychic energy and waters. So not coincidental that you're being shown that perhaps what you're wishing upon, and I feel like it's what spirits tell me is change, you're wishing upon some sort of change, perhaps in yourself or in, I feel like it's in another. And what spirit's saying, or even in the situation, spirit's saying that you're, you're kind of in a, a place of self-delusion because <laughs> you're allowing yourself to be seduced by what you perceive as opposed to what is actually is. The medicine of standstill, it's time to get out of analysis paralysis. Standstill invites you to turn within. Well, that makes sense. You've got to get out of this allowing your perceptions and your your huh, your desires to go from the external 
and draw it inwards so that you can get greater clarity. So a standstill invites you to turn within, breathe, and recognize this is the condition of the moment. It allows you the opportunity to bear witness to whatever is going on before movement resumes. This is also an opportunity to abort a project to exit before damage. And it may also be time to relieve you of any unnecessary burden that you took on without considering the cost. Which one? It depends on your stopping, taking a breath, quieting your mind, and removing all distractions. That's what I feel like this is. It's like, you know, it's like the crow. It just, it goes, its eye catch, uh, his eye is caught by whatever glitters. So that can be a dynamic personality in someone else or, you know, online shopping, thinking that you need something to fill your life uh, and you're perpetually looking for something to distract yourself. The question is from what? This says, after you've stopped, taken a breath, quieted your mind, and removed all distraction, then you can make your next move in a grounded, relaxed, and detached way. When something doesn't go the way you think it should, remember the following. What is yours cannot be taken away. You know, the old saying that I grew up with is, what is for you will never go around you. And that's what this is saying. So I'm going to ask a question as I'm feeling it. So please know that not only am I empathic, I'm highly clairsentient. So is there someone or something that has captivated you, captivated your attention, kind of hoodwinked you into believing something that may not necessarily be true. Whatever that is, it's not real, it's not true, and it takes you out of not only your real energy, but movement forward. Yeah, and the, you need a shake-up. You need, you need to dispel this illusion that's the tower and it could be that you are about to experience a tower moment which can feel shocking it can also feel like a relief um, and the purpose is to bring greater clarity enlightenment and to move out of this illusion into a more authentic truth and so what I'm feeling here is that you have been hoodwinked and spirit is gently and very soon if not if you haven't already experienced this tower moment very quickly and sharply and suddenly will create a scenario and I feel like it's a trigger it could be a trigger that causes you to have this sudden and sharp and dramatic eye-opening shift in your perspective. And I do feel that whatever this is, it's actually going to take you to a more truer wish. A truer wish fulfillment is what Spirit's saying to me. You have the Six of Coins. Yeah, you're about to receive something. And it's a complete transformation. Out with the old, in with something completely brand new that restores balance. It's interesting, over the last, I'd say, week or two, since before the Gemini uh, solar eclipse new moon, there has been uh, one particular group that keeps getting this message. And if you are drawn to this similar message over and over and over again, I feel like it's because you simply do not wish to be out of this energy of all that glitters, distraction. 
there's something that you feel that you're getting out of this. But the problem is, it's keeping you stuck. And it's not allowing you to shift in the direction where spirit, I, I almost want to say needs you to go, but it's not, it's not that spirit needs you to go there for spirit's sake. Spirit needs you to go there for your sake. And I think the gloves are off. I think Spirit's been waiting for you to take this action on your own. And because you're not, it's going to create a situation on your behalf that's a bit shocking, that's a bit eye-opening. And it's doing that to give you new life more authentic life more stable secure and in alignment with your true desires and hopes and wishes and what you've come here to be and do in this particular incarnation and this is going to bring about the settlement of all imbalances in whatever this is and everything that all those little hooks and um, cords that keep you connected to this energy, I feel like it's going to sever those cords for you. And I feel it's doing this because there's some part of you that's wishing for this change, but you don't exactly know what to be, do, or have to create it. And so, and again, this message keeps coming through. This is a divine intervention. And it could literally be shocking to your mental and electrical and energetic body. So that's mind, emotions, and physical body. But it's meant, it's meant to happen to give you so much more than what you've settled on. And that's why this settlement, it's, it's not the, the settlement that you've settled for, because that's false. It's truer harmony, truer balance, truer restoration. It's truth for you, not the truth that you have led yourself to believe but what is actually true for you. Whoa. Um, there's a huge sense of relief that comes with that once you get to this energy. And it's like looking back, you're like, how the heck was I in that energy? And I do feel like after the Justice card, there's a period of interest, and I wouldn't be surprised if the Hermit follows. Okay, close enough, the High Priestess. What I was feeling like is this complete inward energy, like complete inward energy of retrospection, reflection, revis revis revision, revisiting. Because what I sense after this is, <laughs> it's almost like because of this, spirit has perked your interest to know what got me there in the first place. Like, what was it about me? And this is the energy that calls you inward after this. And you, you actually find the answers deep within yourself. And this is completely... And I do feel like this is going to happen around the Capricorn full moon or whatever full moon. I think it's a Capricorn full moon on the 26th of June. I feel like it's going to happen that quickly for you. And then roughly from the 26th until the next new moon in July is when you'll be in this high priestess energy. So that is what I have for you, group one. Thank you for letting me do your reading. If you like, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, set it to all. I do put out new content every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, new moon, full moon, 
Mercury retrograde or any major astrological event. With that, I wish you great success and I will now move to group two. Hello group two, you have quite a few charms here. You have the Hamsa hand, you have this beautiful bejeweled cat. I feel like psychic protection. We have red lips on one end and gold on the other and gold is what came up. I feel like everything you speak and feel turns to gold and you have the clam shell. So this is about um, transforming all the small irritations into gold. The clam turns sand into pearls. So this can also be about wisdom. And something to sink your teeth into. We have Taming the Wind and the Ghost Dance. The way that these uh, oracles were designed is that um, in a particular sequence, one is meant to represent the essence, the other the invitation, and the third the medicine. But that is not the way that I read these cards. Spirit simply tells me what these are, whether they're essence, invitation, or medicine. And for you, this is an invitation, and this is the essence. So this is taming the wind. As an invitation, it's time to clear your energy, be present, and become conscious of how you communicate. This is a good time to write in a journal and put your thoughts into a co cohesive form. Perhaps you need to actually do a smudging ceremony in your home or office, creating a sacred space to write about your dreams and desires. Just remember that when taming the wind appears as a symbol, it is time to honor the Great Spirit with reverence and respect. This card reminds me of a spirit that has visited me many a time and her name is Feather Dancer. And Feather Dancer does a particular dance and she is completely covered with feathers and it is all about clearing out space so that you can take flight. And I do feel that energy the presence of that energy in this card. So you may wish to uh, work with Feather Dancer to help you clear not just your mental, emotional, physical space, but also your etheric space so that you can have deeper insight that your psychic channel of information is clear and you might even be a channeler here by the way and so that your auric etheric body not just your mental emotional physical body but also your etheric bodies which is your aura is cleared and protected i'll come back to the teeth but first i want to go to the ghost dance and did i not say feather dancer and now we have the essence of the ghost dance. The ghost dance of the American Plains Indians united the spirits of the living with those of the ancestors to bring peace to the world. And Feather Dancer is an ancestor. When the ancestors are honored, they bring harmony to us. When we hold them responsible for all that is wrong with us today, they haunt us. Honor the spirits of the ancestors and receive their lessons and gifts. This includes honoring your own past lives. Yeah, it's easy to blame, to put blame on past generations for what is currently wrong in your particular life or the state of the world. When we do that, we don't take accountability. And so in that, as I read these cards, teeth is many, many different connotations, but what I get with that is this represents truths and lies. So it could be 
there are certain lies attached to truth that you need to separate from, which is why you need this clearing out energy and you need to call in your ancestors. And please do work with Feather Dancer. She is an amazing ancestral um, spirit. And I think she will help you to separate because this is truth this is deceptive and you have the truth so i feel like spirit wants you wants to aid you in getting closer to the truth but you cannot do that so long as your mental emotional physical and etheric bodies and also your physical space where you live is cluttered with lies attached to truth, deception, negative, toxic thoughts, energies, blame, guilt, shame, all that sort of coulda, shoulda, woulda, if onlys, etc. Okay, so spirit saying you are in the process of profound, uh, profound and utter purge. Spirit wants to turn you inside out. The question is, are you willing? Would you be willing to let spirit turn you inside out? It's not a very easy process, but it's a necessary one. Okay, so spirit, what message do you have for group two? Kind of makes sense because we're coming into a full moon. We're in that transitional phase between the new moon and the full moon. And the full moon is all about bringing stuff to the surface so that we can truly purge it. You have the Six of Wands. The Six of Wands is about um, some sort of victory and success. So it could be that you're in this process already and I feel like maybe your victory and success is about to reveal itself. We have the page of coins. Oh, I get such a light feeling with that. I'll talk about that in a moment. We have the king of swords. Whew, my heart just keeps expanding and getting lighter as I draw each card here. And then we have the Five of Coins. Mm, and that's the Hamsa, the protection. Because you're in need. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go to the Page of Coins here for a moment. I'm just going to see what this particular artist says with the Page of Coins. Um, this is a Eager to explore new creative or professional opportunities, there's money to be, be, to be made, and you're excited to participate in this environment. The card signifies that you are inexperienced, but you show a great deal of potential. There's a strong enthusiasm to learn all the tricks of the trade. This is an offer coming in. It's interesting because <laughs> this could be the offer of spirit. Literally, will you allow yourself to be turned inside out so that you can receive this offer? And it could be an offer of mental, emotional, physical stability and security as well as financial. And it could very well be a new job or some new creative artistic or educational venture you know typically the coin the page of coins can talk about going to school returning to some or an apprenticeship of some sort now this could also be a spirit apprenticeship but it could literally be higher education so going back to college university or on the job training the thing is you need to get out of whatever this energy is. You need to literally purge your mind, emotions, body, 
and even your environment, physical environment, of whatever these lies attached to truth are and just negative toxic energies of guilt, shame, doubt, fear, coulda, shoulda, woulda, blame, even blame, because I had said I feel like there's some sort of finger pointing or blaming, whether you're blaming your immediate ancestors or the state of the world or something for your current situation. And you might not be doing this consciously, but I do feel that you're going to overcome this and hence the Six of Wands, the victory. And that might be what ushers in this new opportunity. And then moving to the King of Swords, this is the embodiment of intellectual authority, exercising logic and reasoning, honoring history and legacies and tact and diplomacy. I feel like you're going to learn some profound truth and there's going to be a profound wisdom that comes with that. And <laughs> it's a lesson from the ancestors for you. This is a profound clarity card. And it's interesting because when you move to the Five of Coins, this typically talks about uh, lack, illness, uh, suffering, uh, difficult times ahead. You may have already suffered a major financial setback somewhere in the past. Your dire circumstances are compounded by the accompanying embarrassment and isolation as you feel as though you must confront your problems alone. And this could be what this is talking about. This is embarrassment. I felt like it was guilt and shame and blame as a result. Because you feel guilty and shame, you want to blame your, the people in charge or your past ancestors or the past paradigm or, you know, whatever it was that led to this current circumstance. You might even be blaming other people, different cultures and nationalities for this current situation that you're in. And what Spirit's saying is you're not alone, but you felt alone. You know, think of the cat. It's very solitary. It's not like a dog. Dogs are social communities. They're packs. Cats are individual. Yeah, they'll live in feral colonies, but they don't really have a lot to do with each other. It's more for just the comfort of knowing that something or someone else is around them so that they're not so alone. And so you may find it difficult to face yourself. And for reasons you do not fully grasp, it is difficult for you to seek help. And I feel like this is why this is happening. It's to take you out of that energy to provide you with a new opportunity to give you greater clarity and to heal this past or for you could even be I feel like this is a current situation that you're in because this is not only about sickness or illness or discomfort or loss or being in need there is the potential of healing in this and I do want to pull another card and there it is, the healing. Because I was feeling this is leaning towards healing and a greater state of abundance for you and the potential conception and subsequent birth of a whole new existence for you, a reality, mental, emotional, physical, financial, all of it. It's there for you, providing you allow yourself to work with Feather Dancer and your ancestors to go deeper to the truths, to stop blaming the past and everything and everyone associated to the past, even your own self, right? 
hence your guilt and your shame. And release all that. Spirit's got your back is what I'm hearing. Spirit absolutely loves and adores you and is protecting you, although at times it cannot protect you from you. You are your own worst enemy. And so it's easy to put the blame on others, to project that outwards. And Spirit wants you to release all that and to truly turn yourself inside out and allow yourself to be turned inside out. Because what is waiting for you And I do feel that you are more than willing. You may not just yet know how, but it starts with clearing out. You might literally need to go through your entire physical environment, your home where you live, your place of employment as well, your friendships, your online communities, and start purging. Anything and everything so create three boxes, keep, toss out, and reconsider. So what you absolutely know you need to toss out, toss it out. What you absolutely know you need to keep, keep. And what you're not sure of, put it in the reconsider box. And then give yourself time, a couple weeks at least, Spirit's saying two to three weeks. You want to procrastinate to four. Spirit's giving you three weeks time frame, just heads up. You have three weeks. That's divine time. And then spirit is going to take you on this journey. You have three weeks to go through that reconsider box. And yes, you may feel a little overwhelmed and pressured, but you've got this. And spirit will guide you. And what awaits you is abundance. Because you're willing to do this, an offer or multiple offers, mental, emotional, physical, financial, spiritual, come in for you. So that's what I have for you, group two. Thanks for letting me do this reading for you. If you like, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, set it to all. I put out new content every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, new moon, full moon, Mercury retrograde, or any other major astrological event. <sighs> Wishing you great release and relief and new opportunity. And with that, I will now move to group three. Hello, group three. You have the Ganesha elephant head which is all about wisdom and uh, universal consciousness and memory and memories. So this could also be the Akashic Records going into past memories, past life memories. You have the Frog of Transformation, Regeneration. This is Life, Death, Rebirth. Energy. This is also about taking, this is kind of like a, you've got two, okay. This is kind of um, an energy of going slow and hopping from place to place. You have the fool, new beginnings, justice, balance. You have the spiral. And you have the corn. The way the creators um, of these particular shaman oracle designed the oracle was that typically you would pull three cards and one would be the essence, the other would be the invitation, and the third would be the medicine. That is not how spirit gets me to read these cards. I simply tune in and spirit will tell me if it's essence, invitation, or medicine. And so for you, both of these are medicine. Let's talk about the spiral. The spiral announces a descent to the depths and a rebirth. 
Allow nothing to get in the way of this process as the time is right and the forces of nature are supporting you in this endeavor. Using stones, twigs, or yarn, build a spiral on the ground that is large enough to walk through it with at least three turns. Okay, so Spirit's telling me either a spiral or you need to, to walk a labyrinth. There's an entire mental, emotional, and physical and etheric shift that occurs. First, it's an awareness and then a shift that occurs when you walk a spiral and or a labyrinth. And I feel like you're being called to a labyrinth. So you can build one. You can build it in sand on the beach. You can build it with stones. You can build it with twigs. Or you can find one that's on concrete. You can draw it in chalk on the ground. The whole process is when you are about to embark on walking th or moving through it, you are to walk mindfully, take your time, be aware of every time your foot comes up off the ground and steps down on the ground. This is a walking meditation. I kind of already sense what the corn's about, but let me stay on track. Enter the spiral slowly. Once in the center, offer to the earth the feelings or situations that you no longer want in your life. As you walk back the way you entered, feel recharged for your new journey and walk out just as equally with that mindful foot off, foot on the ground energy as you walk into because in that if you rush out you will not be aware of the gifts that spirit is or downloads that spirit wants to give you so coming to the corn this is also the medicine <laughs> beware shortcuts that's exactly what i was referring to with this don't go quick go slow Beware of shortcuts to your dreams or a fast track being offered to you now. Be especially mindful of your feelings of entitlement or an expectation to get something for nothing. This is a time for gratitude, perseverance, going slow, and humility. Be prepared to work toward your goals and plant the seeds of your intentions consciously and respectfully. Release any insecure thoughts of scarcity, feeling that there is not enough, or worry that someone else could take what is yours. What is for you will never go around you, by the way. Know that the universe will always provide, but that you must be in a relationship with it, the universe, spirit, source, energy, creator, in order for you to receive it. You will reap what you sow. Take heart, even if you didn't plant well and have conjured up the illusion of a drought, that there is always a new season to begin again. And that's why you have the fool and the justice because I do feel that you're about to plant a new crop, is what I want to say. The crop of life. The crop of relationship. The crop of love. The crop of adventure. Of faith. Of hope. Of journey. Of education. Of learning. Oh my gosh, I just keep getting more and more goosebumps. Um, so that tells me I'm hitting the, the nail on the head. Um, travel, opportunity, finances, investments. Essentially, your new year begins now is what I'm hearing. You are about to reap, and this makes sense because we're coming into a full moon, I believe next Thursday, a week after this particular reading. And that is the culmination. That is the natural conclusion. That is the natural ending. And then you have, what is it, uh, 14 days, which that then wanes, dissipates, releases, plus three more days after that. So technically 17 days before you plant new seeds, new 
new stars, new hopes, new desires, new crops, new life. Okay. Yeah, Seven of Wands. This is, I'll talk about that in a second. And then Two of Swords, that, okay, yeah, mm-hmm. Okay, Six of, is the Lovers, and then, beautiful. We have the Ace of Wands. Okay, so the six, uh, I'm gonna read this particular book because I know what these traditionally are, but this author also has a different way of looking at things, which is why I like to bring this little booklet in. But traditionally, this is about, um, the Seven of Wands is about defending, uh, standing up to and defending and meeting any challenge that comes your way. And that's what she's saying, rise to meet the challenge. It indicates a competition and the continued maintenance of the status you have achieved. Though you may face difficulties, you choose to stand firm. There is no adversity from which you cannot engage, regardless of whether you win or lose. Be sure of your goals, and there is no negotiating them. Uh, okay. I do feel like this is the challenge. The cha <laughs> The challenge you're being called to is to slow down, to be more mindful, to allow yourself to reap what you sow, to allow yourself Okay, spirits, what I'm hearing is spirits saying you're going to be dissatisfied or you're in an energy of dissatisfaction with what you are currently sowing, reaping, reaping with what you're currently reaping as a result of what you've sown. And what Spirit is telling me is that because of that, you're up for a new challenge, a new journey. I feel like you're willing to begin over. You're, you're willing to begin anew, regardless of whether that's taking the existing of what you've created and transforming it into something different. Not just change for the sake of change, but literally a transformation of different. Or you're literally willing to walk away and start something new. And I say that because the Two of Swords is about allowing your intuition to guide you into making a choice. You're holding conflict, which this challenge is representing. And the challenge is, what do I do with this current energy, right? What do I do with this current harvest? Do I change it, transform it? Do I let it go, release it? Do I begin again? This could be a relationship, a business, a career, a, 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 some adventure, um, an education, a path of education, whatever this is for you. What I get from this is whew, just Go deep within, do the walk, do the spiral walk, do the labyrinth walk. Go slow, be mindful in every step that you take. And this could even be metaphoric for whatever this is that the seed that you've planted that you're about to reap, that is the harvest is here essentially. I do feel there's dissatisfaction here. It's like something didn't quite live up to your expectation. There's a certain victory, yes. There's a certain level of success, yes. But I feel like something is, it didn't meet your expectation. And you're dissatisfied. And that's okay. It's okay to feel dissatisfied because that'll create a hunger within you to create something, to create change, difference, to create something new, to transform what currently is. 
and I do feel you're about to embark on a journey that is going to lead to greater victory, to greater success, to greater balance. To a more fulfilling existence. And it's, it is calling you to make the choice. And I feel like the choice you're about to make, because this is also the lovers, is also a card of choice. And this is talking about using your intuition, and this is talking about going into more of a balanced head and heart space, and I feel like that's why it's essential that you, you walk the labyrinth or the spiral. This is a mindful meditation. It's a mindful walking meditation to draw you deeper into your psyche, into your mind, into your heart. And when you do allow for that, there's this beautiful brand new energy and opportunity an enlightenment, a creative project or creativity. This could be psychic creative energy. It could be emotional creative energy. It could be sexual creative energy, artistic creative energy, mental creative energy, physical creative energy, financial creative energy. I want to pull one more card that shifts everything for you. Yeah, that's exactly what I get. This kind of echoes this energy here, the corn, the spiral, and the seven of wands with the elephant, the frog, the fool, and the justice. It's about keeping what is real and discarding everything else and creating a beautiful change that shifts you out of this dissatisfaction, dis-ease even because the frog is also healing, right? It takes you out of this and brings you into greater balance, restoration, new beginnings, new love, new joy, new appreciation, innocence, beginner mind, out of all this stagnant, stale, been there, done that energy. I just feel like you get a whole new lease and vitality on life. And an acceptance of what it, it, what spirits tell me, it's like the serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. That's the energy you're moving into. And so there's this greater peace, this deep, authentic peace that you embody. And because of that, greater joy. And you're more willing to shift and change and adapt and flow and be. Because I feel like in this energy, it's a lot of doing, a lot of doing. And what Spirit's saying is, okay, that's great. Now you're reaping the, the harvest of that. And now you need to get deep into the being and hence this mindful meditation, walking meditation. So that's what I have for you, group three. You're moving towards a major profound shift that leads to authentic satisfaction. And it might even involve collaborating with someone or something else. You might even receive an offer from someone, like a, either a business or an individual or a group, a community, something. Something someone else, spirit, 
that would like to patron you or collaborate with you on some level to help you that helps you with this shift, with this change, with this profound transformation. And I do feel that this kind of culminates at the full moon and also begins again. So subtle that I'm not even sure you're going to be aware of it until perhaps the next full moon. Okay, spirit saying even upwards to six months is when you see the next culmination of it. That's how slow, and that could even be what this is indicating, it's slow building. <sighs> yeah, and there's a sense of relief that comes with it at the end. So that's what I have for you, Group 3. Thank you for letting me do this reading for you. If you like, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, set it to all. I do put out new content every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, new moon, full moon, Mercury retrograde or any other major astrological event. Wishing you profound and major harvest shift and transformation and new, new birth and new growth. And with that, I will now move to group four. Hello, group four. You have a watch or a clock. Uh, let's call it a clock that is set to 10 after, looks like 10, 10 after 11. Uh, you have the cross of protection and the feather. This is about faith. And you have this beautiful angel wing or feather. It, to me, it's an angel wing, but it could be, oh, the feather of vision. Okay. All right. All right. Let's see what we have here. This is a, like the colors in this, it's pink, green, and clear, um, clear quartz. This is all heart and clarity of heart is what I get from that wing. So spirit will message for group four. I have two. We have this beautiful ring. Engaging or engagement uh, or a promise, the fulfillment of a promise, clarity, partnership, connections. Six of Cups is all about, this is kind of Mercury retrograde energy, it's all about the past, so coming in that, okay, let me explain this. This can be past memories, emotions, events, people, situations, um, knowledge, wisdom, psychic information, energy coming to the present, to the present moment. So something or someone coming in from the past into the present moment. And usually it's for revision, reflection, restoration, rebalance, reactivating, reinitiating, reengaging. We have the staff and we have the serpent. Now traditionally the way these cards were designed is that you pull three cards. One represents the essence, one represents the invitation, one represents the medicine. I do not read the cards that way. Spirit simply tells me what these are and I read them in accordance. And so for you this is medicine and this is invitation. So let's read the medicine. You're caught in the delicate balance between opposing forces, between masculine, feminine, action, and non-action. Okay, you might be just kind of feeling stuck in a rut. Use this to your advantage, as there can be no day without night, no low without high, no wrong without right. This is a time to take corrective action, beginning with your beliefs about what needs to be fixed or repaired. Let destiny take its course nudging it slightly along. Okay, so are you feeling like you need to control something in your life? 
something or someone in your life because I feel like this is telling you to let go of that that's what's keeping you stuck this rightness and wrongness procrastination do you act do you not act and that's what procrastination is it's about being uncertain about The staff traditionally also is the talking stick. I don't know why I needed to share that. Maybe this has something to do with communication, but I will read this first and maybe that message will become more clear. This was the essence, the serpent. Oh, sorry, this was the invitation. The serpent power of the Kundalini is stirring within your chakras, gently asking you to embrace its mystery. Shed the old skin that you have been so attached to and welcome the vulnerable pink underbelly that will bring you a fresh experience of your life. Your passion and sexuality are awakening and this can be scary. Trust the wisdom of serpent to transform your sexual energies into beautiful, original manifestation. It's interesting because this talked about kind of like procrastination and that's kind of what the Six of Cups energy is. It's stuff from the past coming up, people from the past coming up, and it's like, what do I do with this? Like, do I want this in my life? Do I not want this in my life? It's kind of like a sorting out. It's a revisiting, revising, re-editing. It's literally, like I said, Mercury retrograde energy, and we're still in that energy until I think Tuesday. By Wednesday, that starts to dissipate and we get to move forward. And it's like time is standing still for you, and that's why I was feeling this stuck energy. It could be that you're stuck in the past. And this talks about the color pink, and it's the heart energy. It's the literally, this is your sexual life force energy. This is also um, your personal creative energy. And I do feel like because you're kind of stuck in this energy, there's no creative forward movement and this talks about the color pink and in this feather which is all about flight movement we have the heart energy the pink the green and we also have the clarity the crown chakra energy faith and flight again this is a vow okay I'm getting this message now this is a vow you made oh this is heavy energy okay i feel like you made a vow or a promise to something or someone in the past and it's keeping you stuck it has kept you stuck and this may have been around the age of 11 between 10 and 11 between 11 and 12 It's interesting because at that time frame, you're in your emotional energy. And yet, oh yeah, okay. And the Six of Cups usually is anywhere from between the age of 0 to 14. This might be something, something from ch early childhood that's got you locked in is what I'm hearing might have been something that you were told about yourself or something you told yourself because I said this is the talking stick and this is becoming quite apparent and clear to me now uh, and I do feel like it has had you locked in it's had you connected to something or someone 
This might even be 10 or for the past 10 or 11 years even. This could be a relationship. And this could not just be about a parent or a partner. This could also be some sort of creative or business or employee, employer situation that you've been locked in that you've you have felt kind of stuck in. And I feel like you've been wanting to move out of this energy. You've been holding your faith. This is about to shift. This energy is about to shift. I do feel like this has been going on for quite some time. Six, or, six to 12 years is what Spirit's saying. Wow, that's a long time. I feel like there's a promise that hasn't been fulfilled is what I'm hearing. You either promised yourself some, something or someone promised you something. Or you asked for a promise to be fulfilled from something or someone in the past and it has yet to be fulfilled and I'm about to sneeze so excuse me <sighs> that's about to be cleared out because that's exactly what a sneeze is it's clearing out old energy <sighs> I feel like this current Mercury retrograde in Gemini is bringing stuff up to the surface to be cleared out. And I do hear the Spirit saying it's not, it's been a painful process for you. It's not been exactly easy peasy. I feel like you've had a lot of triggers, and Spirit is tightening my stomach. It's been playing on your sense of self-worth and self-empowerment. And Spirit's about to, Spirit's saying that's about to be released. You're about to be released. You're about to be re-empowered. And you're being given voice is what Spirit's saying. I'm feeling your throat chakra is being activated. And that this process has been for that intention and purpose. I feel like you've been blocked at the throat chakra because you feel like you've not been empowered. And I do feel like you are about to honor a promise that you made to yourself between 10 and 12 years ago or when you were between the ages of 11 and 12. Wow, that's a promise long overdue. Yeah, Page of Wands. I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, six of Coins. <sighs> wow, a sense of relief because you're receiving finally. Queen of Coins. Nice. And finally, it is done. Oh, that's that sense of relief I was feeling. And I have to pull the card after. Yeah. Ah, oh, a new beginning. A new cycle. Okay, wow. Oh, you can finally breathe. Something is completely done with. It's over, but you still have a little bit of a process to go through to get to it. So let's... I know what this traditionally stands, but this is a very unique deck, so I like to read what the author has written to include into this. Uh, eager, enthusiastic personality for, full of ardent curiosity and a willingness to explore new ideas. Though you may have a sincere desire to take on new pursuits, it represents only the potential of expression untempered and unguided. There is positive and spontaneity here, 
and even whims can lead to great things, good news and pleasant surprises. Usually this is about messages coming in, new energy coming in, offers coming in. And this is what I feel it is. It's this new hope, new faith, restored faith is what Spirit's saying, restored faith. And with that comes a transformation and I feel like you're about to receive some new offer. It could literally be money. It could be an offer that leads to greater, it could be career, education, job, something that leads to greater stability and security takes you. And I do feel like you needed to clear this out to get to this. And it might even be that it's connected to someone or something that either something or someone from the past is what creates offers you this new opportunity or created the space, the clarity, the awareness, the insight, the courage, uh, the voice and the reason for this opportunity to come in. And you are on the receiving end of it and it does lead to she's got a rabbit and a rabbit is all about fertility and creativity and when you think of fertility, it's abundance. The Queen of Coins kind of represents the Empress card in that regards. This is determination, high achiever, revels in new challenges and new ideas. Though she is warm and passionate, she is also decisive and intense, representing ambition and vibrancy. She indicates your willingness to change your views as needed for the sake of righteousness you are a positive influence on the lives of your friends and colleagues. Yeah, you know what I feel? I said it, renewed faith and, and coming to this Ten of Wands and what this is representing. Some old cycle is done, done, done. It's been around for a long time. You've been in this perpetual loop. You've been holding on to a promise. You've been hoping, wishing, praying. And I feel like it, <laughs> it either manifests at the 11th hour or because it's 10 after 11, it never showed, it never manifested and you completely let it go and you're willing to begin on some brand new, more positive, life-affirming energy. You're, it's whatever this is it's like your hope has been restored so either it's a promise fulfilled or you realize it's never going to happen and you let go of it and because of that you have this renewed sense of life this new lease of life because you realize that you were clinging to something that never could be and that probably was no good for you anyway and it just because of that regardless it brings in this new opportunity and it finally puts to closure a final, final, because I feel like you've been in a loop with this. And this is saying it is done. Done, done, done. And with that, again, we have another rabbit, right? This is kind of like um, High Priestess, Empress, Queen of Coins energy this is piscean energy it's all about deep subconscious psychological psychic intuitive energy you may not have full clarity just yet but you are trusting your intuition to guide you you're trusting spirit to guide you it's an incredibly fertile time for you um, your imagination is heightened your psychic sensitivities are heightened and I do feel like you are you're at home with yourself it's like you're embodying yourself in a way that you've not done before you're embodying your creativity you're embodying your wisdom you're embodying your psychic sensitivity, you're embodying your emotions and the maturity and immaturity, both the dark, the light, the shadow, the light, the negative, the positive. 
I feel like you're coming to peace, to a greater sense of peace, stability, security. And because of that, and again, either because something fulfilled or because you finally let it go, because of that, all this new opportunity, new creative sexual life force energy, vitality, vigor, romantic, innocence of, of mind. A beginner mind is what I want to say because that's kind of what the Page of Wands reminds me of, the beginner mind. You're willing to start over with this deeper, more mature energy and yet also simultaneously this beautiful childlike innocent energy and it might be that that's what you why you needed to go back or allow this past energy and i do feel like it was a pulling on you it pulled you back psychologically emotionally psychically maybe even physically memory i feel like something or someone pulled you back or the past re-emerged, so it could be completely cleared out. It's done very soon, probably at the Capricorn full moon and shortly thereafter, and maybe even from the Capricorn full moon to the next new moon is what Spirit's saying, is when you finally get this release and, re yeah, f final purge release and relief and this new trusting yourself trusting that you've been guided all along and that this was just for the purpose of releasing you because you were bound to something and you're no longer bound to it something or someone you're no longer bound to it you're free to be your own person you're free to be your own creative life force energy in the world you're free to speak, to communicate, to take flight, to be and not just do, to have and not just exist. This is beautiful energy. Thank you for letting me do your reading group four. If you like this, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, set it all. I do put out new content every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, new moon, full moon, Mercury, retrograde, or any other major astrological event. With that, wishing you complete transformation and utter happiness. And I will now move to group five. Hello, group five. You have the word explore oh, with luggage. So maybe you're exploring your baggage, old emotions and thoughts, or you might be getting out and traveling a bit. We have Scorpio. Okay, well, Scorpio is the luggage of baggage, mental emotional baggage. It's going deep into the subconscious mind and emotions to find treasures. It is one of the signs that goes the deepest. And in that, it goes the widest and explores. And this is talking about passion. So this might be about exploring your passion. Exploring your mind and emotions for what you are passionate about. Letting go of old baggage so that you can begin anew and begin again. And maybe taking some risks. Hmm, that kind of goes up there with... Scorpio. We have the Owl and we have the Sweat Lodge. Okay, very interesting. This kind of goes with that theme that I was talking about. The way these cards were originally created by uh, the designers is that they were meant to be pulled in sets of three and one was the Essence, one was the Invitation, and one is the Medicine. That is not how Spirit gets me to read the cards. Spirit simply tells me whether this is going to be essence, invitation, or medicine, similar to that, and I just read it in accordance to whatever Spirit tells me. So as I suspected, this is medicine and this is invitation. I knew that was invitation, I just wasn't sure what this one was. So medicine, owl guards against self-deceptions and insists that your motives be pure and transparent to all. What is the message that you are not hearing? The situation you are not seeing with clarity. 
owl invites you to wait patiently. Bide your time until it is right to act, then do so decisively with no hesitation or remorse. And that's why I feel like you're going deep into your psyche. It's to, to understand yourself better, to understand the things that don't allow you to hear what you need to hear, to allow you to see the things that you need to see. There are things within yourself that you are blocking yourself and hence the invitation to the sweat lodge. This is a time to journey inward into the dark and hidden places of your soul to reconnect with the ancient earth wisdom. This is soul retrieval in a sense. You can also create a sacred and intimate space in the dark by lighting a candle. Observe what emerges and without judging it, invite it to bring you its gifts. You are being offered an opportunity to shed and heal the aspects of the life you have outgrown. Do not worry that you will be consumed by the process and that is why you need to treat this as an exploration, as a journey, as an adventure because what Spirit's saying is you're about to go through a dark night of the soul and it's essential and necessary because it's going to bring to greater um, illumination, enlightenment, transcendence, creativity and opportunity of every kind. I feel like Okay, Spirit's saying, what I'm hearing is, and what I feel is that you're having a hard time with relationships, relating, connecting, and you might have a difficult time connecting with others on a deeper level because you have not yet gone deep within yourself. Okay, there's some lie attached to a truth. Uh-huh, and I feel like it's stifling your ability to communicate, and communication is the way that you connect to and with others. Okay, there's more to this. <laughs> I'm feeling a sense of fear mingled with excitement. Okay, and Spirit saying arousal. Okay you might be misinterpreting your own sexual energies. Okay, that, I hit the nail on the head with that one. Okay. Yeah, this is new sexual, creative, psychic, emotional energy. Okay, you might be confused about what this energy is. You might be feeling this new energy and you don't really know what it is, and you're getting miscommunications, you cross signals is what I'm hearing. This might be about a new relationship with someone or something. It can be a project, it can be an offer, like a business or job offer. It can literally be a person of same or opposite sex. And it doesn't mean that you need to sexually intercourse with them. And this isn't about conquering them. It's literally, it's creating an energy that's causing a confusion within you. And you need to go deep within to explore that. And so it might even be, this is where we get into um, when people are of one sexual identification. So let's say they have gonads and so we identify their sex as male or they have a vagina and we identify their sex as female and they feel an arousal of someone of the same sex and so suddenly they go into the automatic judgment that they're bisexual or they're um, homosexual not homosexual yeah homosexual when that's not actually the case and so they're misinterpreting this energy and so this might be you so it could be a creative energy, it could be a sexual energy, it could be a psych psychic energy, uh, it could be psychic sens uh, sensual energy that you feel in your body, literally at the sexual gonads. 
or at the root chakra level or at your sacral level. And so you're needing to go deep, deep, deep within yourself because I feel like you're putting up barriers to connecting deeper, not only with whomever or whatever this is, but also within yourself. <sighs> yeah. It's trapping you. You're feeling trapped. There, but this is an illusion. It's like you can't move. You don't know what to do with this energy. You're feeling it. And in fact, I feel like you're overwhelmed by this energy. Or you're restricted by it. And you're restricting this connection because of it. And it's creating a great conflict. This is the Five of Swords. It's causing conflict. It's interesting because this is an emotional energy that is severely impacting you mentally. It's challenging your every belief is what I feel. And that's wonderful. It's wonderful that it's creating all this conflict. It's wonderful that you're allowing yourself to go deep into your thoughts. Because it's going to lead to clarity. It's going to lead to profound enlightenment. It's going to lead... The Queen of Swords is akin to the Justice card. It's going to lead to restoration, justice, balance, harmony. Don't be afraid. Scorpio is a deep water sign. That's why we have this, but it's also Scorpio is profoundly psychic, mental energy, and that's what I feel this is. So this is where you're headed, and it's going to require you take some great risks. Risk going into this energy risk the connecting to this energy, risk the purge and the utter transformation of this energy, risk the transformation of your belief systems, more importantly, the transformation of your belief systems, because Scorpio is a fixed sign. And what does that mean? It gets stuck in beliefs beliefs that may be completely false and erroneous. And that's why you're being told you need to take a gamble, a risk, by going deep into these so that you can purge. That's what the sweat lodge is all about. You can purge what is false, what is, or that just isn't yours. Taking on beliefs in early childhood and even into adulthood that aren't yours but you claim them as yours and you live them out as if they're yours. You live them as if they're, they are your truth when in fact you just align to it because you liked someone or something that it represented and so by aligning to it you felt accepted and or loved by that person or thing that you aligned to, if that makes sense to you. I want to draw one more card. Ah, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> That's what I was feeling. The Nine of Cups. It's, uh, this is fulfillment. Because you allow yourself to go through this, and it is, it's a very mentally challenging process that you're going through. It's challenging your every thought. Your core beliefs is what is challenging. Core beliefs that have kept you locked into old patterns of relating and of this sexual life force creative psychic energy that you've never really known what to do with or you don't know how to be with it. You don't know how to have it. You don't know how to possess it. You don't know how to be at one with it. And yes, Sometimes you feel like you've, in past, you've needed to 
possess it so that you can then use it as your source of power to conquest. Think of sexual conquest, right? And intellectual conquest and, and energetically conquering other people. You know, sometimes we energetically conquer other people by talking louder and being more forceful. And Spirit's taking you through this incredible dark night of the soul so that you can purge at such a profound level. This is the, the death and rebirth energy and passion. It's all the things that you suffer. Passion is another word for suffering. It's all these emotional energies that you don't know what to be or do with that cause you tremendous suffering. And so by going deep, deep, deep within, there's deep, profound wisdom and insight and a purging. And the sweat lodge also, it's not only a place where you go to literally sweat and purge out physical toxins and mental and emotional toxins. Usually you smoke the pipe when you're in there or some sort of sacred, uh, we call it marijuana now, uh, but sacred smoke that allows you an altered state of consciousness. And when you get into that altered state of consciousness, and this also has a bit of a mercury retrograde feel to it, um, allows it, new information to come in via spirit or entities. To, to give you, but so it allows you to be in a receptive, and that's the whole thing of the sweat lodge. It's about going into, essentially going back into the womb so that you can receive this altered state of consciousness, change your belief systems by communing with spirit, receiving greater insight and wisdom so that when you step out you literally are rebirthed. So this sweat lodge is a whole lot more sacred than what most non-indigenous First Nations people believe it to be. It is a credibly sacred ceremony. It is about walking back into with your current state of consciousness into the womb, into the womb of your own consciousness not just the, the womb of Gaia, but into the womb of your own consciousness. And the womb of your own consciousness also contains the God consciousness of everything. And that's what the owl represents. So that when you come out, you are literally rebirthed. This is the process that you're going through. So if it feels really dark and heavy and intense, and frustrating at times and depressive and anxious. If you're feeling all those range of motion, know that it's very characteristic of this journey. You will emerge from this <laughs> with the most incredible clarity and emotional fulfillment that you've ever, ever, ever experienced before in your life. Allow yourself to be willing to go through this process because you are going to be the snake that sheds its skin. And the snake, when it sheds its skin, it's like the kundalini rising. You are then at the crown chakra of enlightenment, of truth, of greater truth, of speaking and hearing knowing when you hear truth and speaking truth fearlessly, sometimes a little too sharply. So there does need to tempt, you need, and this is why she kind of represents or is akin to the justice card. You need to temper the need to speak truth forcefully, sharply with compassion, with the heart energy. And that's why in this particular, we see some red and the heart, right? It's tampering the sharpness of truth that cuts through in a soft, still with a sharpness, but with a, a bit of a softness that doesn't kill. It may cut to the heart of the matter and it may cause yourself and others pain only because it's releasing the lie and, and, and revealing the truth. 
and this is what's going to be your process as well, by the way, the truth is going to be revealed to you. And it's going to cause conflict and it's going to cause pain. Whether you choose to suffer or not is up to you. And I do feel that you will choose to suffer to some degree before you finally release yourself from that entire, because that's just a consciousness, it's a choice. And I think you're going to move away from that and you're going to begin to separate what is pain from suffering. Suffering is the lie that you tell yourself pain is real. And you're going to be able to discern between suffering and pain. You build a tolerance for pain. When you're in the energy of suffering, you go deeper and deeper into despondency and despair and depression, or the opposite way, into greater anxiety. And I feel like you're going to be released from that, but not before you go deeper into it. And that's only for you to get the clarity that you need. This is something you personally need to experience. That's why the emotional card is here. You, I feel like you've been experiencing this time and time again, but I feel like something about you has shifted. There's a maturity that has occurred and, and a willingness now to go deep into this emotion, to truly understand it, to understand your own psyche, because in doing that, then you will better understand the psychology of others, because that's just their psyche being expressed, manifested in their actions and their words, just like it is with yours. And so by understanding yours, understanding your words, understanding your actions of your psyche, it will bring you into a a greater place of compassion for yourself and for others. And this is what's going to lead to the sense of relief and release and, and emotional contentment. You're not going to be ruled by your emotions. It's because you're ruled by your emotions that you feel the need to conquer others. That's the word that kept coming up for you in this particular reading with this card. The need to conquer, conquest others because you have not yet done the conquest, conquering of your own psyche and emotions because you haven't been willing to go that deep. And spirit is calling you in and calling you down that deep, dark rabbit hole, that deep, dark well, the dark night of the soul, so that you can, because the deeper you go, there's a tunnel. It's a tunnel, and there's a light at the end of it. You don't come back up. You just go out through and into and out of a whole new and different tunnel, like emerging through a different light. So you don't come back up the hole that you went down. You emerge through a whole different opening, and that's this energy. And that's why you can never go back to the past. You can't go back up to the past entry of the hole that you just went down. Spirit is forcing you through the birth canal and it's painful. But when you emerge, there's a sense of relief and gratitude and emotional fulfillment and contentment and, and mental, mental calm because you're not ruled by your emotions anymore. Your mind gets agitated because of your emotions. And so, Spirit's telling me six to nine months for you to go through this journey. And that makes sense because that's roughly, think about true pregnancy when a woman is pregnant. That's a, roughly the gestation period of the human consciousness is six to nine months. And that is so what are we in June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March. Next spring, if you're watching this at June 2021, six to nine months from whenever you, you first hear this message. 
So if you're hearing this in 2022, 2023, 2024, whatever month, add another six to nine months, and that is your gestation of rebirth. Because this is a rebirth, and you can struggle, and you can fight against it, and you can resist all you want. You can pull all the little temper tantrums, resist, bargain, go through all the different stages of grief, anger, frustration, irritation, but spirit is taking you kicking and screaming and essentially you asked for this at some point prior to your incarnation. The time is now. Put on your big girl, big boy underwear. The time is now. Spirit's taking you. Because you asked for it, the stars are aligned. Divine timing is now. You're going through this. So buckle up and allow yourself to be transformed and be a willing recipient and allow yourself to go deep take a risk on yourself put everything else aside you are the greatest risk in your life right now and in doing so it will lead to a greater joy that you've never experienced and balance and harmony that you've never experienced experienced before and how is that going to benefit you in every way imaginable financially relationship wise the way you love the way you think the way you feel the way you dress the way you act the way you speak the offers that you receive the generosity that you give it's it's this is life-altering you will never be the same again <sighs> you're not alone it may feel like it at times, but you're not alone. So rely on Source, Creator, Spirit to guide you through this journey. And you'll make it. And the light at the end of the tunnel, once you've transformed and entered through that light into that new space, you will then create a life of your conscious choosing because you're going to be in a different place of mental, emotional, spiritual maturity. Thank you for letting me do this reading for you, Group 5. If you like, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, set it to all. I do put out new content every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, new moon, full moon, Mercury retrograde, or any other major astrological event. Be gentle with yourself. And with that, Thank you for watching, and I will see you again in a future video. Until then, ciao for now.